Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome to the final FNAF Security Breach news video before the game comes out. Now, I'm sure we're still gonna have plenty more to talk about the game. Heck, we're gonna do an entire playthrough on the game, so a lot more Security Breach content's coming. But as of content before release, this is the final video. Because it's December 16th, and you know what that means? The game is coming out today, which is still... A crazy thought. After everything the community's been through, waiting for this game, delays, leaks, everything, it's finally coming to a close. But even though we are mere hours away from the release of the game, we still have quite a lot to talk about. So in today's video, we're going to be summarizing Daco's interview with Steerwall Studios that revealed a bit more about the game. We're going to be talking about the physical releases of the game coming next year to PS4 and PS5. Some brand new teasers, three brand new teasers that Steerwall released for a countdown to the game. And also probably the main reason why I clicked on this video why you're not seeing any playthrough videos on the game right now. Because if you didn't know, the game's supposed to be out, or at least it was supposed to be out. So what exactly happened? So subscribe to the channel, hit the like button so you stay notified whenever I post my security breach playthrough and also when we get new news on the game. And now normally I'd save this for the end of the video, but I think we should kick the video off with what's going on with the release time. Because if you didn't know, the game was supposed to come out midnight Thursday, Pacific Coast, you know, 3 a.m. on East Coast, like 8 a.m. over in the UK. So obviously something happened because the game's not out yet. Well, a few people noticed on the Steam page for the game, the time got changed. It was no longer 3 a.m. for Eastern Standard. It was 9 p.m., which was strange because the PlayStation Store release time didn't change. So did the PC release get delayed, but PlayStation didn't? Well, luckily, Steerwall made a official blog post to their website explaining what's going on. Oh boy, we're here. It's actually happening. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach is releasing today. In preparation for the launch, I wanted to ask for a few minutes of your time to talk about what you can expect from the team here at Steerwall over the coming days and beyond. First and foremost, the game will be released on Thursday, December 16th at 6 p.m. PST. So unfortunately, it seems that the game got delayed by about 18 hours or so. We know Steam said midnight, but that was an oversight on our part, and we apologize. We passed all of our submissions, but continued ripping through bugs in an effort to release a solid day one patch. Once our QA team gives the thumbs up on them, we'll get those patches submitted. While we predict patches will submit tonight, there is a non-zero chance that a fix breaks something, and we want to be absolutely certain we can react to that possibility. To give ourselves a bit of a cushion and you a better experience, we moved the release to later in the day. Now let's talk about the near future. We're about to go from a few testers to hundreds of thousands and as such are prepared to respond to any serious issues that shake out of the launch. I'm fortunate that I get to tell you all with complete honesty that every serious issue we've found, things like hard progression blockers and game breaking crashes have been addressed. In all my years in games, I've never been able to say that with a straight face. To be clear though, that does not mean we found every issue. You will find things that we didn't and we will address them appropriately. Lastly, in order to talk about the coming weeks and months, I first need to tell you all about how things have been at Steel Wool. As an indie developer, this is easily the biggest game the studio has ever built. Leading up to launch, we've made thousands of balance changes and bug fixes. In order to accomplish that, the team pushed itself to the absolute limit. The talented human beings I work with have poured everything they've got into this game. I, for one, am immensely grateful for their contributions and beyond proud of what they've achieved. All this to say, once any critical issues are addressed, the team is going to take a break for the holidays. I think that once you all start playing the game, you will agree they've earned it. We're thrilled to give this game to you all and can't wait to see your reactions. From all of us here at Steerwall, thank you for always supporting us as we do the thing we love most in the world, creating joy through games. Yeah, so that is a quick explanation of what's going on with the release of the game, what time it's coming out, and also what we can expect to see in the future post-launch. So even though the delay is a little bit unfortunate, it's only by like 18 hours, so not even a full day. It's really not that bad. Plus, it's for bug fixes, making the experience of the game better for us players, which I think 
is, is it's perfectly fine delaying the game for that. So yeah, after the game launches, we can expect a few patches if there's any critical issues, and then Steerwall is taking a break, and I really do think that they deserve it. So now let's quickly talk about the physical copies of the game being released next year. Earlier today, the Maximum Game Store, who are the people who ported the other FNAF games, released pre-orders for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 for Security Breach, and they're going to be released on March 15th, 2022. Which, if you remember, other platforms should be getting the game around that same time. So it makes you wonder, is that the same date Xbox is going to get the game? The only release time we have so far with Xbox and other platforms is three months after release. And then again, that was a while ago. So maybe they need more time. Maybe they need less time. We don't know. But if you want to pre-order a physical copy of the game, it's going to be linked down below. And now I've got a huge list of info that came from Darko's interview with Steel Wool. I'll leave the full interview linked down below. It's about 40 or so minutes. Huge, huge thank you to Darko and Ray and also Jason from Steel Wool for the amazing interview. And also a lot of the info I have for you guys in this video came from Kane Carter on Twitter and also the Ferdit Discord, both of which, again, linked down below. I unfortunately only have a list, not any clips, so I'm just going to be reading you guys a whole bunch of info. It took the team about two full days days to take an employee Ray around the entire pizza plex. Really shows you how big the mall is gonna be. When the team started back during the time of Curse of Dreadbear, they originally had a two-story building for the pizza plex. However, when they gave the pizza plex to the sets team, the sets team made it a three-story building, and technically, it's more than three stories now. Which, that's most likely referring to the sewers, which are going to be underneath, most likely, the pizza plex. Apparently, there's an arcade machine that mimics, or at the very least, is a reference to Dance Dance Revolution. Whether or not we can actually play the game, I don't know. We do know that we can play a lot of the arcade machines, so I'm assuming we can play that. The music man that appears in the game is not the same character from Pizza simulator and his official name is dj music man the game will take place over the course of only one night but each hour in the night is going to be structured kind of the same way the nights are in any traditional fnaf game so that likely means the further you get into the night the more difficult it's going to get the more active the characters are going to be and the more aggressive they're going to be and there's also more than five hours in the night some areas around the pizza plex have various mini games like arcade machines and fantasy golf and they are set separate from the general overworld of the game. Since you'd most likely get attacked and probably killed, get a game over when playing the games. Since in the overworld, if you want to call it that, the characters are actively hunting you down. The game will have different paths that you can take inspired by the choices you make during the game. And these choices will obviously have lasting effects. An example that Steerwell used is going upstairs or downstairs, but you only have time to explore one area. So choosing where to go and in what what order will affect your gameplay. Stewall said that replayability and player choice was a focus for the game. All of this means that there are most likely multiple endings. The various boss battles throughout the game might be optional and they may tie into that whole player choice that Steerwolf's going for. We will learn more about the past history of the Freddy's franchise and especially Fredbear's Family Diner. Steerwolf has thought about adding multiplayer to Security Breach. That is an idea that they've kind of bounced around here and there, but nothing's concrete. So far, they have no plans to implement multiplayer to the game, but they did finally, after so many years, confirm that Flashlight Freeze in Help Wanted was a scrapped multiplayer game mode. Due to the previous success of the Curse of Dreadbear DLC from Help Wanted, DLC for Security Breach is being discussed. We'll likely hear more about that next year in 2022. Though nothing is concrete right now, updates and bug patches for the game are planned to be released after the game is out. The game will launch with subtitles. There is an office gameplay segment in Security Breach. And we do know that there are multiple offices in the Pizzaplex, so which one we play in, unsure. We could play in multiple offices throughout the night, or it could just be only one. There is a parts and service warehouse that Ray said he's very excited to see players react to. Apparently, there's a golfing minigame that features settings from the previous FNAF games. Scott often gave Steerwall content to put into Security Breach, stuff that Steerwall didn't even know what it was or what it was or is for. And Scott and his team did a lot of the textures for things like the arcade machines and easter eggs. Showtime from Help Wanted 
wanted may return in security breach, though they said not in a way that we might expect. Which, if you ask me, I think that most likely means it is in the game and we will see it in some form. Stewell has considered releasing dev diary videos to their channel to give their employees an opportunity to explain and share the process of developing the game. When given the opportunity to tease something from Security Breach, Stewell replied with schematics. When trying to play through the game and collect every collectible, Jason said he played about four and a half hours and was nowhere near beating the game. And the final one, apparently, the official name of the Moon and Sun animatronics is the Daycare Attendant, which if you ask me, is not a good name. I like Moon Drop and Sunrise so much better, man. But those are a few key details that fans pointed out in the interview with Steel Wolf Studios, and now let's take a look at a few teasers. These will be the final thing we talk about about Security Breach before the game comes out. These three new teasers. So on their Twitter, Steel Wolf did a countdown three days two days one day leading up to the release of security breach for three days they have a dancing staff bot he looks like he's having a fun time except he's missing his right hand and instead it's replaced with a panel it looks like it has helpy's face on it as well as a email symbol on day two we have the day care attendant kind of dancing, celebrating on top of their tower in the play area. It's also interesting to point out, it looks like the lights are on, or at least they have a spotlight on them in this GIF. And the final GIF so far has DJ Music Man dropping some beats, which I'm excited for, because that means his role in the game is not exclusively just chasing you down in the tunnels, right? It seems like he's an actual attraction in the Pizzaplex itself, which I'm looking forward to. It looks like he's having a jamming time, and I really hope that at some point in the game he's not chasing us down and he's actually just DJing. But that is it. That is everything. This is the final Steel Wool, I mean, Security Breach video before release. It's still crazy to think about. This game comes out in a couple of hours. Man, I am so excited for this game. I, I really can't wait. I'm gonna be doing an entire playthrough of the game, trying to find all the secrets, hopefully getting a lot of endings, though I don't know how long this game is gonna be. If the series turns out to be like 50 episodes, might have to cut it a bit short because, oh my god, that's just a lot of videos. But my goal for the playthrough is about daily uploads, maybe two uploads a day if I can squeeze it in. I'm gonna try and stay away from all spoilers. I really don't want to get spoiled for the game, so when you watch my videos, my reaction will be genuine. And I'm just, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So what are you guys most looking forward to in the new game? The new characters, the new setting, what are we gonna get after Security Bree? And the next time I see you will probably be me saying, hello people of the internet and welcome to to FNAF Security Breach. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.